Alrighty then. Here is the gluing jig arrangement that works on pretty much any pipe that has a similar uh, shank break to this. I used it in a previous video with a horn extension and thought uh, I'll run through it again so you guys don't have to jump back and forth between these things. Uh, there's currently no glue on this this pipe. I'm going to disassemble it and then do the actual work off camera just so I don't have to worry about too many things at once. I thought I'd talk about the principles of this. Uh, this is just a weight here on top. In this case it's a slab, a chunk of like PVC or something. Anything at all will work. It's regular in shape. It's got a flat bottom. My favorite for large jobs is a steel bushing. This weighs like a pound or something with a piece of fabric tape on the bottom for traction. But anything you want, uh, this jar would work. Something that you can grab clearly and you know the orientation of. You don't want an irregularly shaped object. This is essential. You need something that is slightly tacky on both sides, meaning it, you, it's for so it doesn't slide or slip. Now most of the time you're going to be gluing so that it's absolutely dead flat parallel with your work surface. In fact a bubble level of this style is the best way to get that. But in cases like the current uh, job with a curved shank and an angled break uh, we have to split the difference between the two angles. There's really no other way to do it uh, and get everything aligned. Now you could make a little wedge of some material that would set this to level and then put your weight on that, but you'd end up having to make something every time. And it's easier to just use something like this that'll prevent slippage and then just align the center of gravity of your weight over the spot that you want it. That of course just sitting on there. Now this tool here, most people are familiar with these things. It's a reamer, uh, what I can't remember the name of these, doesn't matter, a magic reamer or something, that uh, the blades expand and contract like that as you turn the knob in the back. Well, they're actually not a very good reamer for reasons I won't go into now, but they certainly are well-made little devices. This one's all stainless steel, and they make the best bowl-holding device ever invented. You can really clamp a, a stummel for whatever work you might be doing on it, uh, and uh, not worry about marring it in any way. You don't need to worry about clamping the outside. And then finally, the device that I'm holding all this with, it's a pen vise, P-E-N, like uh, the people who make uh, 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 fountain pens. They're like the same way there are people that make pipes, there are people who make fountain pens as a hobby and as a job. And uh, whereas you normally would do that on a lathe, it's possible to do it on a drill press, especially for a hobbyist, if you have something like this. And it's got the, the grooves angled in here to hold a, a tubular, uh, like a barrel for a pen. I don't use it for that or anything like that, but it sure is handy for this or similar operations. This thing weighs quite a bit. I'd guess, I don't know, five, six, seven pounds so that you're absolutely stable. And uh, the glue that I prefer that we're going to be using is uh, a type of epoxy that's designed for gluing raw wood to raw wood for, believe it or not, experimental airplane builders that uh, build air, aircraft in their own hangars and garages, spruce usually, basswood, things like that, and uh, they have a glue that was designed for them. Well, it turns out to be the toughest stuff that you can obtain for wood-to-wood -wood joints, so we'll be using that, and then it'll be tinted 
with in this case black and it this is like squid ink it's just this stuff it's designed for the purpose it's a system 3 epoxy paste pigment and it's uh, like paint that never dries you I don't know what would happen if you put it on something I think it would just sit there but if it, it's designed to be mixed in very small quantities like one tip of you know, like five percent or less by volume so just a tip on the end of a toothpick will turn a small puddle of epoxy jet black and we want that because the human eye is much more attracted to a light line on a black surface than a black line on a black surface obviously the contrast is the thing that you want to avoid and if you use the glue itself it has a translucence that is under some light you might be able to see it well if you tint it with some of this stuff here it ends up a matte color that is basically indistinguishable from the finish of of a, a pipe like this one so uh, between that and some of the tricks that we're going to be doing to dress the glue joint after it's cured we should be able to camouflage it completely now a final word not related to the gluing but if you were curious in the previous tape why I did not advocate drilling here and then drilling here and taking a length of tubing the length of tubing that we know we're going to use why not drill a hole in this direction and another hole in this direction in each separate piece and then sliding the whole thing together so it just fits and then you don't have to mess around with all this glue business or worry about alignment on the glue business and as attractive as that sounds do not be tempted to try that it is literally not possible to align the holes the you're gonna say well wait a minute a drill bit is self centering and it will always get right where it needs to be as you ream these airways out well that's not true yeah the holes are never quite round the surface is never quite level your angle on the bit when you're messing with it is never going to be exactly coaxial and you'll get a tiny amount of error there and that's on each piece and then those two errors to get added together so that when you get your tube in each piece and you slide it together and guess what it does not line up and you got a a big glue gap and a weak joint and it just simply isn't how to do it we will glue it together and then drill and then of course things are in rigid alignment by definition so there's the the backstory on that do not drill before gluing you will regret it so there we go I'm gonna turn off the camera actually glue this up and then get back with you for the next step after the glue has uh, completely cured it takes 24 hours alrighty then